Welcome to our third and hopefully the last online version of Hadley Mothers Club Candidates Night. I am Denise Devine. I am the uh, president of Hadley Mothers Club and I will be uh, moderating uh, tonight's um, event. Uh, we would like to first uh, remind voters that the elections will be on May 17th at the Hadley Senior Center from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And that's May 17th. Candidates will adhere to the rules sent to them when they, are, when they agree to participate. The order of speaking will be as the ballot will list. Questions will be uh, asked of the candidates. They were submitted by email and reviewed by the committee. And each, can, um, each position will address the questions after their opening statements. Okay, so let, let us begin with the opening statements for the select one. David, you're all set. Okay. Good evening. My name is David Phil, and I'm running for re-election for the select board. I'd like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for sponsoring this great Candidates Night event. Some quick background on me. I was born and raised on Middle Street and attended Hadley schools. And after graduating from Hopkins Academy, I served for over 10 years in the United States Air Force and for the last 16 years in federal law enforcement. During that time, I earned a bachelor's of science in government, politics and policy. And I have an MBA with a project management concentration and started two successful businesses. My wife, Brandy, and I have three children, Audra, who was eight, David, who was seven, and Cora, who was four, all of whom attend Hadley schools. Over the last two terms, I've worked hard to hold people accountable for their work, whether they are contractors, town employees, or even other state and local agencies, something that Hadley has never been very good at in the past. I stood up to the Mass Department of Transportation when they tried to strong arm landowners in town and take more of their land than was needed for the Route 9 project. Working with the building inspector and the DPW director, I held the contractors for the Senior Center Library in North Hadley Station accountable for their workmanship and forced them to fix or redo portions of the project that were not done right the first time and ensure that the buildings were finished correctly and to industry standards. We as taxpayers are the ones paying the bills for these projects after all, and we expect to get what we paid for. We have some really fantastic, dedicated employees, committee members, and volunteers in town. But like any organization, there will always be areas that can be improved upon. For the first time, we began to actually use probationary employment periods for what they were designed for. If a newly hired employee was not performing up to the expected standard or not fulfilling their job description, we moved on to find other individuals willing to provide better customer service to our residents and more productivity. Again, an important part of being a good watchdog for our tax dollars. When I first ran, I promised to operate in a transparent and open fashion, a promise which I have kept. I invite you to go on Facebook, search David Phil Hadley Select Board member, and you can find every update I've ever posted while on the select board. Everything from project updates, answering residents' questions, opinion, etc. I published my personal cell phone and make my best effort to return resident calls the same or the next day and listen to concerns. I don't cater to special interests. I don't accept campaign donations where I would then feel obligated to repay those donations through voting a particular way in the future. In town government, there shouldn't be political parties and special interests driving what we do. My goal is and always has been to do what's best for the town of Hadley as a whole. Hadley has a long history of kicking the can down the road on important decisions. After 15 years the of the town trying to find a solution for North Hadley Hall, I took charge of the issue and found a permanent solution where the historic building will be preserved and remodeled all at zero cost to the taxpayers. Russell School is next on the list. It's time to sp stop spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on studies and consultants and then doing nothing as the building further de deteriorates as every day passes. Just a couple of other accomplishments. Working with Kestrel Land Trust, I helped to permanently preserve 350 plus acres of town land for conservation use and open it to all types of recreation. 
conversion of our town streetlights to LED that would reduce our energy bills by over 60%, with 80% of the project being paid for by grant money I obtained. We have improved critical infrastructure such as generators in our new town-owned fiber, fiber optic network. I've worked to preserve farmland, make our town more efficient, cut waste, and get things done ethically, legally, but ever more efficiently than ever before. Over the past few years, I've worked with Amherst officials on an outside of the box solution, where in the future they could treat our sewage for less money than we can do it here in town, saving our residents money on their sewer bills and taking advantage of Amherst's excess treatment capacity. We've moved forward with reopening our second water supply location at Mount Warner and signed an agreement to sell drinking water to Amherst when they require it. When someone tells me something can't be done or this is the way we've always done it, my response is why? It is because of this mindset, I have a proven track record as a problem solver and a creative think thinker who gets things done. I'm open-minded and willing to listen to alternative viewpoints. We may not always agree, but I will always give you a fair chance to make your case. Town government should not be about personal agendas or vendettas, but rather what is best for the town. Thank you for your time. And I hope to earn your vote on Tuesday, May 17th. Thank you. Go ahead, Randy. Okay, thank you. I'd like to thank the people in attendance for this uh, event this evening. Thank Hadley Mothers Club and Hadley Media for putting this together. I'm Randy Iser and I'm running for a seat on the select board. I'm asking for your vote on May 17th. I have lived in Hadley since 1966, attended Hadley schools and graduated from Hopkins Academy in 1977. As a kid, I worked on several farms in town, picking asparagus, corn, cucumbers, squash, and harvesting tobacco. I've been married to my wife, Martha, since 1988, and together we have three daughters who all attended Hadley schools and graduated from Hopkins Academy. During the girls' years in the Hadley schools, I coached Lassie League softball, park and rec basketball, and soccer, and middle school basketball. Since 1996, I have owned and operated Harold L. Eaton Associates, a land surveying business. In 2013, I started Spruce Hill Motors, a used car dealership. Both businesses are located in Hadley. Over the years, I have served as a member of the Long Range Plan Implementation Committee, was one of the original members of the Community Preservation Act Committee, and currently serve as town moderator. My business, professional, and personal experiences have enhanced my abilities in fiscal responsibility, budgeting, negotiation, and problem solving. These skills will allow me to be an effective member of the select board. I have a good understanding of the town's bylaws and have worked successfully with other town boards and would continue to do so. I treat all people with dignity and respect and listen to all sides of an issue before making a decision. The select board is a five member team elected by the townspeople in order to help carry out the will of the townspeople. If a select board member is contacted by a resident with an issue or concern, it is that board member's duty to report this to the town administrator or the rest of the select board. It should then be discussed at their next meeting so a resolution can be arrived at. There is no place for unilateral decision making, which unfortunately we've seen too much of this past year. The select board should defend the integrity of other boards, committees, and employees who work for the town. When someone on the select board tries to undermine those boards, boards, all it does is lower morale, productivity, and the public's trust of the select board. If a board member, if board members disagree on an issue, it needs to be brought forward, discussed, and dealt with in an open, non-accusatory fashion and not behind a person's back. This is an area where direct communication is so vitally important and one in which facts need to be gathered, questions asked, and a decision made based on this process. Regular communication with all boards is key to effective government. Select board meetings should be transparent in all areas. Decisions should not be made ahead of time in private and then passed with little or no public debate, which is the guiding principle behind the open meeting law. Transparency may slow the process, but in a democracy, we pride ourselves in governance by and for all versus the currently few in office. In closing, I would engage in more open communication with other committees and boards, 
encourage residents to bring their concerns and or ideas to the select board, support those who work for the town, whether paid or volunteer, work on increasing the tax base, particularly along Route 9, and continue protecting our valuable farmland and foster better fiscal responsibility. Hadley has been my home for most of my life. I can't think of a better place to live and I'd like to do my part to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I am resetting my clock every time somebody's done. So um, next up is Molly Keegan. Thank you to the Mothers Club for hosting this event tonight. Hadley needs elected officials who want to engage in long-term planning in a thoughtful, inclusive, and collaborative manner. This requires a commitment to work with other boards and committees and a desire to engage as many of our over 5,300 residents as possible in that conversation. If we want to continue to enjoy lower taxes, we need to change the conversation. We must stop making short-sighted decisions to cut costs at the expense of critical services at our employees and focus on increasing the tax base itself. Let's reimagine the Route 9 corridor together and be proactive in making that vision a reality. We must work with commercial landowners to think about other uses of existing parcels to provide critically needed housing stock, including housing for our seniors, recent graduates, young families, and our own workforce. Hadley needs leadership from the select board, not the micromanagement we've been experiencing over the past two years. We're blessed with department heads, staff, and volunteers who are competent and passionate about our town. Let them do their jobs without interference from part-time elected officials, or worse, live in fear of being replaced or made irrelevant when there's a difference of opinion with a member of the select board. Leadership is about influencing and guiding others. It's not a dictatorship. Leaders should be excellent listeners and communicators. Communication must be available and transparent through a public means, not just through use of any one member's personal Facebook page with a limited reach. Hadley needs its elected officials to show some discipline. Decisions should be based on facts, not emotions or the opinions of a few. Unfortunately, our taxpayer dollars have been wasted on legal fees that doubled due to rushed, poorly thought out actions of the board. Anonymous complaints should never be acted upon as quickly as this board has done. Decisions of consequence require thoughtful discussion of all sides of the story before a vote is taken, a built-in pause at board meetings to allow time for further fact gathering and time for reflection after a topic is first put on the agenda. Once a decision is made, board members should have the grace to set differences aside and move on in everyone's interest. It's time for a change. It's time to move forward and stop looking backwards. Hadley's future depends on it. So if elected, what will I bring to the table? Collectively, I served 15 years on finance committee, school committee, and the select board, and I chaired all three. Since I stepped down from the board two years ago, I've remained engaged as co-chair of the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee, along with the Ambulance Oversight Committee and liaison to the university. My entire professional career has been in financial management, a skill set sorely needed on the board right now. I'm a Hadley business owner and my family has lived in town for over 23 years. If elected, I'll work to treat everyone with dignity and respect, especially our town employees and volunteers. I'll prioritize development of a multi-year plan for the town of Hadley that addresses critical issues like housing, climate change impacts, infrastructure, staffing and succession planning for critical positions. I'll work with the town financial management team to create a funding strategy that supports that strategic plan. I'll make the town's social media and website the primary source of accurate town news and updates so it's accessible to all. I'll recommend creation of a business advisory council to act as a sounding board to vet issues impacting the business community before they're voted upon. I'll promote volunteerism and engagement by holding regular public forums to discuss town affairs. And I'll work to repair and strengthen relationships with our neighbors, legislative delegation, and our business partners. Please exercise your right to vote on May 17th. There are two available select board seats, and I would appreciate your vote for one of them. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is John Wiskelitz. Hello, can you hear me? John Waskevitz, I'm up for re-election to the select board. Uh, I've been, this would be my third term now, nine years I've been serving in the people of Hadley. Through the good and the bad, the complaints and the praises for the jobs we do, it's pretty tough sometimes to make a decision if we don't have all the facts together for sure. Uh, the senior center, the library, and the North Sub Fire Substation were finally completed through this pandemic and opened and running now, up and running now. Uh, I'd like to serve for another one more term, uh, another three years. Uh, I'd appreciate your, your vote on Election Day on Tuesday, May 17th. Thank you. Okay, next up is Richard Wilda. Good evening. Hi. Voice okay? I decided early this past January to take out nomination papers for the select board after a long attempt to right a wrong imposed by the current board. At their March 3rd meeting of last year, after a brief debate, they unanimously voted to add a new line item on all water bills. Taking a page from our federal government playbook, they labeled this new fee infrastructure with proceeds to be applied to either water or sewer accounts. The money from this new line item was immediately placed into the sewer account. About mid-summer, I had printed a letter to the editor of the Gazette explaining why this deliberately mislabeled line item was wrong. At the late September select board meeting, I was granted to speak for three minutes explaining why using water department financial resources to subsidize the sewer account that was a distraction. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, I then told the issue would be discussed at a future meeting. On this 27th, I filed a letter with the select board secretary asking two questions. Did anyone on the board or our town administrator consult town council as to the legality of the issue? If so, I would like a dated copy of that response. Secondly, did the board or the our administrator compare Hadley's existing sewer fees with other local towns? I never received an answer. On the April 6th of this year's board meeting, a proposal was made to split the tax, split the proceeds of the line item, 55% water account and 45% sewer. This compromise is not acceptable to me. The select board's attempt to keep the sewer user fees low is admirable. It helps those town's businesses keep expenses down. However, the board last November voted to adopt a split tax rate the first in recent history. Businesses now are paying more real estate taxes than residential landowners. This is hypocritical. Hadley taxpayers need a change. The level of arrogance and lack of transparency is unacceptable. Thank you.
Okay. Hang on, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, Denise. All set. Okay. Um, I, so now there will be questions for the select board. We're going to go in order of uh, the order we just went in now for the first question, and then we will rotate around. The first question, what is well and what is ill in Hadley town government? What should we do now to make things better? I can repeat the question if anyone needs it repeated when their turn is up or turn is up. And it's three minutes for the response and David fills up first. So I'll start with what is well, and that is uh, the town is in a good financial shape um, through prudent financial management over the years, AAA bond rating, uh, the careful use of funds that, that we've um, seen over the last several years. Um, and, and we've got a lot of good town employees, a, a lot of great town employees that keep things running. They worked all through the pandemic. They met people on their front steps of their houses to get paper signed. They dropped off, you know, bills, picked up bills, et cetera. Um, so those, those are some great things. As far as what is ill, some of the most frustrating things I've found while being on the select board is uh, one, how long it takes for anything to get done. And as somebody mentioned, you know, there's, there should be a pause and that's correct because they should be done transparently. But at the same time, uh, Hadley wastes tens of thousands of dollars a year on studies, consultants, just endless thinking about things without ever making a decision, unfortunately. So uh, we need to fix that. Another thing that we need to ensure is that no one on any uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of volunteers that serve on committees and volunteers are great for volunteering their time and we really appreciate it. So when someone's doing great, we have a tendency to uh, keep reappointing them to their committees. And that's great because it encourages continued great work. Um, where we run into trouble is when we're not seeing um, fair decision-making or, um, you know, kind of the good old boy network being applied instead of fair, fair, um, fair rulings. And what we have to understand as elected officials or as committee members or volunteers is that we are all appointed or elected. They're not lifetime appointments. And so uh, it, it's important that we continue to do what is best for the town, uh, regardless what the issue is. And the idea of um, you know, personal agendas and vendettas, which seems to be something that's uh, come to a head in the last year or so, isn't something that's productive for the town of Hadley. Thank you. Okay, up next is Randy Iser. What is well and what is ill in Hadley town government? What should we do now to make things better? Okay, now am I unmuted? All right, I will have to agree with Mr. Phil that financially the town is very well off. We do have some wonderful employees that are dedicated to the town. Um, the ill part, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we, we need some transparency from start to finish at our meetings, whether it's the select board or, or anything else. Uh, transparency does not begin at the end. It begins at the beginning. Uh, there's uh, too many issues that we as townspeople hear the end result, but we don't know how the decision was made. And I think that's very important. Um, the people that work for the town, yes, they, they, they are, we have volunteers, we have paid employees. The majority of them do a great job. Some don't. And some need some guidance along the way. Uh, and I've seen too much uh, where people 
have disagreements with a board and then they they lose their position without a discussion about that at all and i believe that needs to change uh you need to sit down with people if you've got an issue with them uh explain what your concerns are as a board member and listen to what they have to say if it can be fixed great if it can't then at that point they can be relieved of their position uh i would love to see the board all the boards in town work together especially on bigger projects like the library and the senior center the boards are typically all the boards are involved but not necessarily collaboratively and i think that is a necessary thing to happen and finally i believe that we don't have enough townspeople involved in our government process and we need to do whatever we can to to make meetings more interesting so that townspeople will want to be involved and contribute thank you Okay, Molly Keegan, um, what is well and what is ill in Hadley Town Government? What should we do now to make things better? Thanks, Denise. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot that's well in Hadley Town Government. And, um, you know, again, not to be repetitive, but certainly Hadley's in a much better financial uh, position than many of the other municipalities in the Commonwealth. And in large part, that's due to the teamwork um, that happens at town hall. So, you know, again, it's imperative that the volunteer committees, the elected officials work cooperatively with the town staff. Um, you know, I can't say enough about the quality of, of people working at town hall. And uh, probably the, the biggest thing that I missed um, when I stepped away from the board was not having that direct day-to-day -day contact with them. So. Uh, Yes, financial stability is first and foremost. The other thing is Hadley has done an amazing job implementing large swaths, I'll call it, of the original master plan, which was recently updated um, just a few years ago. So think about the protected land, think about the, uh, the solar sites. You know, we've done an incredible job and are the envy of many other municipalities, again, across the Commonwealth for what we've been able to accomplish. <clears throat> what needs improvement. Um, right now, I'd say the lack of balance on the select board. I am very disturbed when I see any committee that pretty predictably is either, you know, tends to be voting, you know, four to one. Um, when you see those types of votes over and over and over again, either homework isn't being done and people are coming in with a preconceived notion of how they're going to vote before they've heard all the information. Um, or I don't, I don't know the alternative. It's just, it's unusual. And I think that we need to have balance on the board to promote, um, you know, full vetting of issues so that people who are watching know what the pros and cons are of any decision that's being made. So that's something I'd like to see. And uh, the other thing is we need to behave um, in a way that we attract more volunteers. Um, and one of the things that I would love to see us do is a much better job getting out in front of the town, having town forums and not complaining that it's going to create an extra meeting. Um, it's imperative that we do that. We want to engage um, younger people in town. We want to engage people who are recently moved to town. And the more informed they are, the more likely they are to participate. So those are uh, two key things I'd like to see. Okay, next up is John Wishkevitz. What is well and what is ill in Hadley Town Government? What should we do now to make things better? Well, we, we, we're still moving forward over the last nine years that I've been on the board. Uh, as I said, the police uh, and fire substation, the senior center, the library, we have been doing some minimal infrastructure work on the water and sewer, but that that's the main issue moving forward that we need to address. Um, we, we've got a lot of infrastructure issues. I do agree with all three members, uh, all three candidates. 
uh, what they said throughout the interview here now on most of the issues. Um, the infrastructure in town goes back to the 1900s with the water system and 1964 with the sewer system. And along with the nine years I've been on a board, I've been with the water and sewer department for 38 years now. So I've got a lot of, a lot of input, hopefully that we can bring forward and come to some kind of decision and conclusion over the next 10 years in town with our infrastructure problems. Sorry. The last person on for this question is Richard Wolga. Um, Wolga, and what is well and what is ill in Hadley Town Government? What should we do now to make things better? That's a rhetorical question. Uh, I can't put my finger on any one specific thing. All I can do is go back to when I was on the board for two terms quite some time ago. When we seen a problem, there were only three of us and we managed to get things done without a minimum of delay. And uh, as soon as we seen a problem, we've corrected it. And I think that's what should be happening now. It shouldn't be problems being kicked down the road. I don't like that phrase. It is not necessary and it shouldn't be done. Okay, so the next question um, is, um, as a farming community in uncertain times, what can we do to support the, state, the sustainability of our fields, farms, and farmers? First up is Randy Iser. Okay, first thing that we should do if we're concerned about our farms and farmers is to speak to the farmers, find out what they feel is necessary to help them. Uh, once we talk with them, then we can uh, come up with a plan to implement their wishes, but we currently do a very good job of preserving a lot of farmland through the APR program. Uh, we just voted on, a book, uh, I don't know how many acres on the West Farm on South Maple Street, uh, but typically at every town meeting that the APR issue comes up, we do that. Uh, and I'm not familiar with what might be available for through the state and federal governments uh, to help the farmers, but I'm sure there's something we could research and help them in whatever way we can. Thanks. Okay, um, next up is uh, Molly Keegan. As a farming community in uncertain times, what can we do to support the sustainability of our fields, farms, and farmers? Thanks, Denise. Um, I'd like to key in on the uncertain times. Uh, there are so many drivers, obviously, to the, the health and well being and sustainability of running any sort of agricultural operation. And what's probably the most concerning thing is the one thing that absolutely nobody can control, which is uh, the impact of climate change right now. But what we can do is again, work uh, to Randy's point, work with the agricultural community to figure out what we can do to help them. I mean, even minor, um, seemingly small efforts um, to combat the, the bigger picture of climate change is critically important. Um, the other thing I would say is that we probably need to raise the profile of the Agricultural Committee. We do have an Ag Committee in town. Um, during most of my tenure volunteering in town, very rarely did I see any minutes or, or was I aware of any of the work that was being done by the committee. And I don't, I don't mean that to disparage whatever they're doing, but um, I think in times like this, again, if this is important to the master plan, um, perhaps we should be uh, doing more collaborative effort with that committee. 
The other thing we can do is we can promote agritourism. Uh, many of the farms are holding on to a lifeline uh, because they've basically remade themselves, right? I mean, think about Barstow's uh, farm as a good example, uh, the Sugar Shack in North Hadley. I mean, whatever we can do working cooperatively with the legislative delegation and with the business uh, leaders to promote agritourism and drive people to these farming operations to help um, bring in outside dollars is critically important. Um, and I think we, we've we done some of that well, but we can do an awful lot more as a municipality to help make that happen. Um, so those are just a, a few of the thoughts that I have. Thank you. Uh, John Wischewitz, as a farming community in uncertain times, what can we do to support the sustainability of our fields, farms, and farmers? Yes, just keep working with them, I guess. Uh, Maple Line Farm, uh, the Sugar Shack, Barstow Farm. Uh, you, can, you can pretty much name them all now, Cooks. Uh, the West Farm, Nibala Farms. There's there's some big farms still in town, and there 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 are grant programs available for for different farming operations, which they they keep a close eye on. But there's more I'm sure we could do through the legislature to help them uh, stay sustainable. Next up is Richard Olga. As a farming community in uncertain times, what can we do to support the sustainability of our fields, farms, and farmers? Uh, born and brought up in Hadley, I was a farmer for quite a few years in my youth. My first job was clipping onions, and I was no more than six years old on West Street. And, uh, and then picking asparagus later in the honeypot region of Hadley. And then working for a while at the Smith Dairy Farm on Mill Valley Road. So I'm quite familiar with the farming community here in Hadley. And at present time, I think for the most part, farmers are doing a damn good job of do, doing what they do. And uh, if we can afford, assist them in any way with state or federal grants, I'll be all for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, and next up is David Phil. As a as a farming community in uncertain times, what can we do to support the sustainability of our fields, farms, and farmers? So um, when I was eleven, I started working for Al Zahowski over on West Street and worked for him for quite some time. And I've kept a lot of the, the contacts with uh, other farmers in town. I live across the street here in North Adley from one of the biggest dairy farms in the area. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of contact with people actually doing farm work on a daily basis. Um, one of the biggest complaints they have is again, dealing with, with uh, you know, climate change and environmental uh, problems. Last year was a horrible year for tobacco. Um, hardly anybody actually harvested a crop that was worth selling because of the various issues. Um, you know, we need to embrace new technology. Um, there's a lot of no-till options out there, which I know the Divine Farm and Barstow's and many others have embraced that's, that saves money and is also good for the environment, um, can help with. Uh, uh, we've got a great agricultural committee in town Matt Kushai is on that committee. I know an LZ and, and several others. Um, they do a good job at, at what they do. Um, they get word out about events. They show up for uh, special events in town and they, they fundraise and whatnot. Um, you know, we can always bring more awareness to what Hadley offers. You know, we are the asparagus capital of the world. That's something that we helped to achieve. Um, I think it was two years ago, something that the governor recognized as Hadley being the asparagus capital of the world. So any of that good press, that good um, attention we can bring to our community is fantastic. Um, I think it's important to also, uh, you know, promote the farm stands. 
The farm stands in town are fantastic. Some of the best fruits and vegetables you can possibly get in the area. And uh, it, you know, we've got 40,000 cars a day that travel down Route 9. There's no reason for anybody to shop anywhere else but our farm stands in town. So I think it's a, it's a great thing we can bring more attention to and help the farmers in that way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next question. Last year, the select board voted to split the commercial and residential tax rate in response to COVID. Uh, causing revenue changes, caused revenue changes. I am reading exactly what the person wrote. However, continuing the split rate would harm local businesses if it continues. Will you commit to restoring the tax rate to its traditional structure to protect our tax base? First up is Molly Egan. Thanks, Denise. So I attended that select board meeting and I actually um, spoke, I believe, at that meeting as well. And the entire time that I was on finance committee and the select board, anytime the concept of a, a, a conversation came up regarding a split tax rate, I was adamantly opposed to it um, for, you know, the, the logical reasons. Um, you know, the, we all enjoy uh, a relatively low tax uh, bill because of the businesses along that Route 9 corridor and, and the businesses in town in general. And it never made sense to me to upset the apple cart. Um, every year, Dan Zadonik and the assessors did a great analysis, um, and the numbers never indicated that we, there was any benefit from us doing that. Um, something changed this year, though, and there were a finite set of circumstances when you look at the picture, the whole picture where I thought that it made sense to split the tax rate for this one year and one year only. Um, and that was the conversation that they took place at the select board meeting. Um, it's the position that was uh, supported by the financial management team at town hall. And it had to do with an unusual alignment of circumstances um, due to COVID where the the assessed values of the properties were very much skewed. So to try to not put an undue burden on the property uh, residential side of things, the uh, board decided to recommend going with the split tax rate for one year. So I'm going to say that I, I'm always reluctant to say, you know, use absolutes. Um, it made sense to me the one year. I don't see where it would make sense going forward. I'd like, I want us to go back to the single tax rate. We made a commitment to going back to the single tax rate. Um, and I firmly am in that camp. My only caveat is COVID threw things um, up in the air quite a bit and who knows what's going to come at us down the road. But my firm position at this point is let's go back to a single tax rate. So yes, that's, that's the position I would take. Last year, the select board voted to split the commercial and residential tax rates in response to COVID caused revenue changes. However, continuing the split rate would harm local businesses if it continues. Will you commit to restoring the tax rate to its traditional structure to protect our tax base? Next up for this question is John Wischkevitz. Yes, absolutely. I, I had the debate through a lot of the small businesses and seen the effects of the very small businesses and what it was going to cost them on top of the supply chain issues, the COVID issues. Uh, I just, I, I didn't want to do it last year, but there hasn't been any major complaints. That, I mean, a lot of hearsay complaints you might want to say but uh the big the big boxes have taken the uh taken the uh accounts and paid them up and we're moving forward uh but absolutely if if we get a chance to put it back to one rate i, I would vote in favor of putting it back to one tax rate
Okay. Last year, the select board voted to split the commercial and residential tax rate in response to COVID caused revenue changes. However, continuing the tax rate will harm local businesses if it continues. Will you commit to restoring the tax rate to its traditional structure to protect our tax base? Next up for this question is Richard Olga. Having to uh, do a split tax rate, I understand it was almost necessary for one year, but I'm adamantly against continuing this practice. It should go back to one single tax rate. Thank you. Next up is David Phil. David, do you need me to read again or you good? No, nope, I'm all set, thank you. <laughs> So uh, early in the pandemic, uh, we voted to uh, pull some money out of stabilization to help um, balance the budget. And the reason we did that is because everybody needed help at that time. We pledged to put every penny back and we did. We put every penny plus some back into stabilization. But what it did was to help keep the tax rate low for businesses and the homeowners in town when we didn't know what was going to happen with revenues and employment and things like that during the pandemic. Uh, you know, fast forward two years and we came up on the split tax rate. And as was mentioned before, uh, commercial rates were held or commercial valuations were held excessively low uh, due to the lag in the way that commercial properties are assessed. While um, residential properties, you look at your house value, they've skyrocketed over the years. Uh, you know, you could have been living in a $300,000 house two years ago, and now it's a $500,000 house. Nothing's probably changed on your house, but the values have just gone through the roof. So what we were faced with as a board was if we stuck with a single tax rate, um, you know, residents would have seen massive increases in their tax bills. Um, commercial properties would have seen small increases or in some cases decreases in their tax bills, despite the fact that many of them had reco recovered financially from the pandemic. So what we're seeing is that, uh, you know, it was a one-year thing. It was required at the time, but uh, going forward, we need to get back on the same page. Everybody paying the same tax rate. It's what's best for businesses. And let's face it, it's the businesses in Route 9 that keep our tax rate low in town for everybody across the board. So we need to support our businesses. You're muted, Denise. Um, Randy is, a, is up next for that question. Randy, do you need to read the question again? No, I think I can remember that far back. Excellent. Thank it's a long one. <laughs> so when the split tax rate decision was made, I spoke against it. Uh, not I, I own a small business in town, but I didn't speak against it on behalf of myself. I did it for the... Uh, people, the businesses who were hit hard by COVID. Uh, so that said, uh, I am a firm believer in the single tax rate. As people have said previously, the business, if it wasn't for the business base we have in this town, our tax rate would be double what it is. So we need to treat them with respect, with the understanding that without them, we would be in a very huge financial mess. So my, I would keep it at a single tax rate. Okay, great. Um, last question. Uh, many voters are concerned that Hadley's tax rates have been creeping up. Are you committed to maintaining Hadley's low tax rates and rejecting Proposition 2.5 overrides? First up on this question is John Wischkevitz. I just had that discussion with two citizens today, actually. Um, the financial team back even when Molly was on the board uh, we went in a direction of trying to uh, move the town meeting forward a little bit quicker. 
that was what we were concentrating on. So we did a lot within the levy, but the more and more that I'm looking at the votes and the discussions throughout the citizens in town, I think we need to get back to proposition two and a half override votes and see where the people actually stand beyond the 120 people that we have at the town meeting at any particular time. Okay. Richard Wilka is up for this question. Many voters are concerned that Hadley's tax rate have been, has been creeping up. Are you committed to maintaining Hadley's low tax rates and rejecting proposition two and a half overrides? I am. However, I do not like the idea of kick, keeping a, as in the sewer division, there hasn't been an increase in the sewer fees in five years. And it's, I've, according to some people I've talked to, there it direly needs it. In a case like that, we have to fund. We, there, any department in the Hadley should not be underfunded. We have to raise it whenever possible. When I was on a sewer commission, we, uh, Elmer Huntley was in, keeping an eye on our expenses and when they said this coming year, you're going to be in a bind, we very incrementally raised the sewer user fees. And that's what should be done with all departments. Thank you. Many voters are concerned that the Hadley's tax rates have been creeping up. Are you committed to maintaining? Hadley's low tax rates and rejecting proposition two and a half overrides. David Phil. Absolutely. I'm a member of the Capital Committee for the last two years, and we've worked hard on that committee to make sure that anything we were purchasing as far as capital, we're talking about trucks and you know uh, carpets for the schools, things along those lines, were all done within our existing tax levy. We didn't want debt exclusion. We didn't want to have to go to a two and a half override um, in our general budget. Um, obviously, things are increasing drastically in price. You know, we budget for three, four dollar diesel fuel for the DPW and the fire department, and now we're above six dollars. So, uh, to some degree, increases are unavoidable. Um, we also have a lot of expenses with infrastructure in town. Um, you know, constant culvert, colla culvert collapses, water main breaks, sewer lines that need to be replaced. Uh, there's, you know, a never ending list of things that need to be done. I do think that the most important part is being good stewards of the tax money that we do have. Um, you know, I, I will, I won't say we'll never have an override because you never know. Things come up, things could change. Uh, you know, we're limited to a two and a half percent increase year, year over year. And, uh, you know, if you look at inflation and what's happening now, that can be pretty tough. Um, but if you can look at my record on how I voted the last four years on the board. Um, you can, you know, you can just look at my record. I've done everything I can to keep the tax rates low, um, to cut waste and just to be as efficient as possible in town. It's not perfect. We've got a long way to go in a lot of areas. But the better we can do in those areas, the more money we can save and have to avoid, you know, a two and a half override. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Randy Iser is up for this question. Randy, do you need me to read that again? Or why not? Many voters are concerned that Hadley's tax rates have been creeping up. Are you committed to maintaining Hadley's low tax rates and rejecting proposition two and a half overrides. So nobody wants to pay taxes or nobody likes to pay taxes. Let's put it that way. I don't care who you are. We all do it. We know it's necessary, but we'd rather use our money elsewhere if we could. That being said, 
costs rise all the time. We have no control over the 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 inflation, the the rise in this, that, or the other thing. So I don't think it's appropriate to say that we will never have a proposition two and a half override vote again. But I believe that if we try to, as I said earlier, increase the tax base, do what we can to keep our costs as low as we can and just basically manage the money as if it was our own, then we can do our best not to increase the taxes to the point where we have to have an override. All right. So uh, the last uh, candidate to um, address that question will be Molly Keegan. Thanks, Denise. Um, <clears throat> so before I mention changing the conversation, one of the things I'd like to see is us stop focusing on the tax rate. Um, it's a number that it's easy for people to get their heads around, but there's actually a complicated uh, formula that, that goes into it. So, you know, if you talk to the assessors, it's, uh, you know, huge variable, of course, is assessed values, right? So I think, um, number one, we need to educate people. Uh, I'm afraid that over the past couple of years, there was a decision made um, to recommend to town meeting that we forego about $800,000 of property taxes over a couple of year period. Um, some of that money came out of stabilization. Yes, we did pay it back, but we paid it back from ARPA funds that the federal government provided. Um, I think that perhaps, again, much more thought could have gone into that decision because that is tax money that we're never gonna get back again. Um, and the reality is we now have, um, quite frankly, a funding crisis with public safety that needs to be addressed, let alone water, sewer infrastructure and everything. So th these um, decisions, are, you know, the it's nice to simplify it and just talk about something about the tax rate, let's keep it low. But what we really need is multi-year planning. Um, we, I, I have all the faith in the world of town meeting. I think town meeting generally gets it right. And I think if we present to town meeting a multi-year plan that shows where we're going, exactly how we're gonna address some of the issues the other candidates have raised that aren't going away anytime soon, um, if, in fact, that means that at some point we need to be looking at a Prop 2.5 override, I think people just want to know what they're voting for. They want to know what they're going to get for their money. Um, and it behooves the leadership of this town to lay it out there for them in such a manner that they can feel confident in whatever decision they make on town meeting floor. So when we're going to talk about keeping our tax rate low, it's imperative that we tell people the pros and cons of that decision um, so that, again, they can make an informed decision because um, we've got a lot of work to do over the next few years. Thank you. Thank you. So that is all the questions for the select board this evening. Um, we thank you all for coming. Um, if you would like to stay on the call, you certainly can stay on the call. Um, but um, the next um, um, the position up for um, is a planning board, which is um, William Dwyer. And he will have his uh, five minutes of uh, his introduction to it about him. Hi. Ready to I am Bill Dwyer. I am running for re-election to the planning board. Uh, I was first elected in 1987 and have enjoyed being re-elected six more times. Uh, the math works out to a total of 35 years. And uh, believe it or not, I'm only third in seniority on a five-member board. But uh, I'm enjoying it and I want to continue. For those who don't know me uh, particularly, I am a Hopkins Acad Academy graduate uh, from the class of 72. Uh, I attended Amherst College, Boston College Law School, and I practiced law in both Northampton and Hadley 
since 19... Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I don't know what happened there um, with the, uh, the muting, but uh, um, how much did, uh, how much came across? No, most of it, Bill, I think you just missed, uh, we just heard uh, the part about uh, law school. I think that's where it cut out. now the Hadley Town Treasurer. And I wanted to say that uh, my Hadley roots go back to my great grandfather, Patrick Ryan, who purchased the farm we now live on in North Hadley in 1867. But to more contemporary uh, times, there's a running joke in the planning community uh, about uh, trying to tell the difference between a planning board and a reacting board. Uh, part of our job is to manage the zoning bylaw, but another part of our job is to do permitting. And a lot of time we spend doing permitting and don't really have a chance to do much planning. Uh, the upside of the last few years has been that we have been able to really dig into the planning aspects. Uh, with the aid of a uh, contract with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, we have rolled out uh, adult use cannabis uh, bylaws in 2019. We uh, set up the Affordable Housing Trust Fund in 2020. Uh, we worked on um, updating definitions across the zoning bylaw, as well as simplifying the permitting process for campers along the river in 2021. And we just uh, rolled out at uh, town meeting last week, um, updated language regarding special permits and signage. And as well, we have worked into um, developing staff support for the planning board, something that we have been operating without for the last 35 years and, and more. Looking forward, um, I am a member of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. I am Hadley's representative to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. I am also Hadley's representative to the Joint Transportation Committee which is a regional organization that gets us in line for federally, uh, federal funds for uh, transportation issues. I'm on the Housing and Economic Development Committee with Molly Keegan, and I am also on the Town Hall Development Team, which is a group that meets weekly to discuss projects across all of the, what used to be silos. So all in all, I, I'm having fun doing this. I'm enjoying the work. Uh, I hope that um, the community appreciates the effort I am putting in. And I would ask for your vote next Tuesday, May 17th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no questions for the planning board tonight. So thank you, Bill. Okay, thank you. All right. So let me reset me. Okay, I'm good. All right, so we have uh, the school committee um, position. Um, the first up for um, the five minute introduction would be Tony Lynn Morelli. Thanks to the event and to all of you for taking the time to listen and my fellow candidates for spending the energy to run for, for volunteer or part-time positions. I'd like to tell you a bit about myself and why I'm running to fill the open seat on the school committee. I'm Tony Lynn Morelli. I'm a mom of a third grader at Hadley Elementary. That means I have an idea of what it's been like to parent throughout the pandemic, to manage online school and changing schedules and sports, and masking and testing and vaccines and all of the risk assessment that went into nearly every day. 
And I want to say right up front that I've been so impressed with how Heather and Humera and the rest of the members of the school committee have run things over the last few years. I've attended or watched all of the school committee meetings since my son started at Hadley Elementary School. What an incredible challenge they have had to deal with the last few years, and they handled it using a data-driven approach, being thoughtful and conscientious, and by putting in so, so much time to keep our kids safe and healthy, both mentally and physically through these challenging times. And always they were professional and collegial, engaging in spirited debates, but always with respect for each other and the process. I love school. I come from an immigrant family. My grandparents were farmers in Italy and my dad and uncles were in construction. My parents don't have bachelor's degrees, but instilled in me a love for education. I love school so much I never left. I got my bachelor's degree and then a PhD in ecology, studying lemurs in Madagascar, and started working at UMass nearly 10 years ago, where I am now faculty in the Department of Environmental Conservation. I work closely with students to help them develop their academic skills, as well as, more recently, deal with the emotional and mental health complications of the pandemic. As an ecologist, I study the impacts of climate change on the natural world, including the animals and plants we find our, in our backyard here in the Valley. Some of my main duties are to collaborate with a diverse group of people, track annual budgets of hundreds of thousands of dollars, oversee students and other personnel, and crunch data. All things I have seen would be valuable in a role on the school committee. I have been highly engaged in the nearly 10 years that I've lived in Hadley. I'm currently helping run the Mosquito Opt-Out Committee and Hadley Learns, and was on the Hadley Conservation Commission for nearly four years. School committee feels like another way that I can participate and give back to our town. I've lived a lot of places in the US and around the world, and this is the best place I've ever lived. I love it here. And I want others to know how great it is too. It's no secret that we struggle with enrollment in Hadley Public Schools on a few fronts. We have fewer and fewer families that can afford to buy or even rent in Hadley and thus raise their kids here. You might have noticed by red sunshine Morelli signs around town, my local artist friend designed them. She wanted to buy a house in Hadley and keep her kids in our schools, but couldn't find one that their family could afford and had to move to a different town. The other issue we deal with in terms of enrollment is losing people that do not feel included. This issue has been a central focus of mine. For years, I have led a number of groups whose goal was to increase a sense of belonging in science and education. For example, I recently led an effort to understand how we can support kids and young adults with disabilities and chronic illness to stay in science. I have helped to lead the Hadley Learns group, which was specifically developed to increase a sense of belonging for all Hadley residents. No matter if you are rich or poor, no matter your race or gender or the number of years you've lived here, I want everyone to feel that they can consider themselves from Hadley and that they wanna stay and raise their kids here. Why do I wanna run for school committee? I wanna continue the great work that the school committee has been doing. I wanna bring a data-driven, collaborative, professional, collegial spirit to the challenges that Hadley Public Schools are facing. And I wanna support our administrators, our parents, our teachers, and our students as we move past the immediate challenges of COVID to consider what opportunities lie ahead for our small but mighty town. Thank you. Okay. Our next can our next candidate for school committee is Christine Kuczynski. Good evening, Hadley. I would like to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for tonight's candidates night and the Harrisons for the technical assistance. I would also like to take a moment to thank outgoing member Heather Clash and her colleagues on the school committee, as well as superintendent, Dr. McKenzie. These last two years, they faced unforeseen complex and demanding challenges that were unprecedented. 
So thank you for your perseverance, your dedication, and your leadership. As many of you know, I'm Christine Pipchinski, and I'm running for school committee. I have been a member of the Hadley community for over 30 years. My husband Jim and I raised our boys here, and while there were plenty of bumps along the way, I'm very proud of the young men they have become. For nearly 19 years, I worked for the Hadley school system, teaching middle school English and high school electives at Hopkins Academy, and I loved every minute I spent in room 205. But then COVID happened and upended everything. And like many, my family responsibilities and priorities changed when my mom came to live with us in the summer of 2020. The decision to care for her was a very easy one. The decision to retire from teaching was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make. I love teaching. I love working with students and advocating for their educational needs. And nothing makes me happier than to see our students achieve, succeed, and go on to lead happy, productive lives. Being on the school committee will allow me to continue working on behalf of all of our students. So according to the Department of Education, the school committee has oversight of and responsibility for the school system. It sets the direction in which the system must go and establishes criteria to determine if its goals and policies are being met. But our school committee is and needs to be so much more than that. It is a team of individuals from different backgrounds and experiences coming together with the common goal of helping students grow, learn, and enjoy their educational experiences. Our school committee regularly faces issues that invite a strong set strong opinions and passionate beliefs. However, their goal still remains the same, to pursue consensus, to reconcile differences, and to reach compromises, all for the benefit of our students. Our school committee goes beyond the classroom and partners with the community. They are responsive and receptive to parents, staff, students, and the community at large, working to build public understanding and support. They are deeply involved in our community and spend many hours in the schools and at extracurricular events. As a school committee member, I will bring a unique perspective, that of a teacher, a parent, and a community member with a vested interest in our school district success. From a teacher's perspective, one of the most rewarding aspects is seeing a student realize their full academic potential. Therefore, I would fight to ensure that every student is equipped with the proper tools, resources, and opportunities to maximize their academic and personal success. At the elementary level, we need to encourage a love of learning, foster creativity, exploration, and discovery with an academic structure so that every student is empowered to reach their maximum potential, all the while still letting kids be kids. At the upper levels, we need to focus on ensuring that each student is served in the best capacity based on their individual academic needs and personal goals, whether that be high school diploma, a college degree, pursuing a trade, or serving our country. Every one of our students deserves a quality, diverse, full educational experience where the content is challenging and rewarding, develops critical thinking skills, and encourages a strong work ethic. I also strongly believe that we have amazing teachers and staff working with our kids. They inspire our children, they hold them accountable, and they are a source of innovation and creativity. And we must keep up the morale of all district employees. Providing support to our school employees is a foundation for success. As a parent, I feel our parents need to be here, themselves being represented. When feedback and concerns go unaddressed, disparaged or unspoken because parents are unsure of how they will be perceived, it undermines the parent system relationship. And I want every parent to feel that they have a committee who is empathetic, accountable, and respectful of their values. In some cases, I'm a new member of Hadley by their standards because I married into, but I did marry into an established family with strong ties. And I know we have many districts, uh, issues that we're gonna be facing, especially with dwindling enrollment. But I'm con very confident that we can find innovative ways to address them together and provide a small private school advantaged education with the resources and opportunities of a public school. 
Our incredible alumni include those who attended Smithfield, and they are our real life success stories. So I humbly ask that next Tuesday you vote Christine Pipchinski for school committee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have some questions for school committee mm. uh, candidates. So um, I will read it uh, one time and then I'll read it again for the, the second um, candidate. I'm, I'm doing the hardest one first. <laughs> school districts across the nation have become embroiled in division over critical race theory. Would you commit to supporting only policies that avoid stereotyping students as privileged or as victims based on race? First up is Tony uh, Lynn Morelli. Sure, thanks for the question. So um, as faculty at UMass, I'm familiar with critical race theory in the context of university education. It's not something that we teach in our schools in K through 12 in any district that I'm familiar with, certainly not ours. Um, so uh, putting critical race theory aside as like an academic subject that isn't being taught in Hadley. Um, uh, I guess I'll just add that it is really important that we're talking about belonging and inclusion in our schools because they're our families who feel like they are not feeling included and being heard and their children are not being seen in our district. And so, and we, as um, Christine mentioned, we have to be considering our um, issues about enrollment in our schools. So that's something that is a big challenge for us moving forward. And um, Hadley is a place that I'm proud that has been focused on thinking about how we can feel like we can increase the sense of belonging in our town. So um, I'm happy to be thinking about how we can have our children all the way from Hadley Elementary all the way to Hopkins feel like this is the place for them, that um, they're seen and understood by their teachers and supported in the ways that they can um, develop to become the full individuals, both academically, socially, and all the other ways that we want to see our kids grow up. Thank you. I'll repeat the question again. Um, school districts across the nation have become embroiled in division over critical race theory. Would you commit to supporting only policies that avoid stereotyping students as privileged or as victims based on race? Christine Pichinsky. Would I support, so could you please repeat that last part of the question? Yeah. Um, so uh, would you commit to supporting only policies that avoid stereotyping students as privileged or as victims based on race? I avoid stereotyping any student. I don't believe that they're, is a benefit to tearing down anyone in order to raise our children up. They all need to be empowered. They all need to be accepted for who they are. We need to teach them to love themselves and accept other people for who they are. And to understand that we all go through changes. We all you know, grow, we mature and they have to be you know, aware of, yes, how their actions affect everyone around them, but that ultimately they need to have a confidence in themselves that they can succeed and that nobody's gonna stop them. I've always taught against things such as social, you know, I've always taught social justice. I teach against stereotyping. I am a firm believer that, and I actually shared this background with Tony, my, my maiden name was LaSala. So I also came from, um, I'm, only, I'm only second and third generations. And, it, you know, there were plenty of times that there were comments made. 
but you need, we need to teach our students to rise above it. And the best revenge is a do well. And I think we can do that. Thank you. All right, so um, I, we have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, please discuss the role of parents in setting school policy, curriculum, and reading material. Should the school administration, school committee, and teachers follow the lead of parents in educating their children? So up first is Christine Fitchens. This needs to be a symbiotic relationship. There needs to be, parents need to be able to say, I'm not comfortable with this. And we need to be innovative enough to be able to accommodate and say, then we have alternatives. Parents should never feel as if they're being undermined or corrected in how they're raising their children. Believe me, I, I know from what I speak because, you know, when my sons were in school, there was quite a bit, you know, the, we, we, there was things in the press about how misogynistic our kids are, how uh, racist our kids are, how homophobic our kids are. And, I, and, and at that point I'm thinking, okay, now you're just insulting me as a parent and that's, that's not a position that any school employee should take is that we need to be fixed in some way. Every community, every school system obviously needs improvement, but parents have a right to raise their children in particular, you know, with particular family values, especially if it's based in religion, because that's where we're starting to cross lines. I, I believe in acceptance. I believe that we need to prepare our children, but passing, when it starts to border on passing judgment of how our citizens are raising our, their children, I think we need to find ways to compromise and to come up with solutions that we can all live with. Okay, um, I'll read the question again. Please discuss the role of parents in, in setting school policy, curriculum, and reading material. Should the school administration, school committee, and teachers follow the lead of parents in educating their children? Um, next to answer would be Tony Lynn Morelli. I trust our teachers, and I trust the administration in our district as well. And that was really validated over the last months of me rewatching all of the school committee meetings and listening to superintendent um, Fanny and the um, school committee and our principals talk through how to care for our students during arguably the biggest trauma that um, we've experienced in decades as we went through this COVID pandemic. Um, we employ our teachers and ultimately our administrators to think about what's best for our kids. They go to school for it. And uh, we as parents also have a lot of influence, obviously not just at home, but also in reporting back. And there is every time there's a school committee meeting, there is um, an opportunity for um, public to um, uh, comment. The doors are always open as far as I've ever experienced over the last years for the administration and the teachers. Um, they seem to be very receptive to any concerns from the parents. But ultimately, I feel that um, the teachers are selecting the curriculum. Um, there is some matter of sort of um, public faith in sending your children to public school that you believe this is the system that you're buying into. And this is the, as a town, we support that, those schools. And as was mentioned earlier, we have wonderful schools that turn out wonderful children. And so I trust that system um, to 
uh, choose the right curriculum with, of course, some um, uh, feedback from parents, but ultimately those experts to be making those decisions. Okay, um, there's actually two more questions. So, uh, so the next question is, what, what are the most pressing issues faced by, by Hadley schools? What are the most pressing issues faced by Hadley schools? And uh, Tony, Lynn, you are up first this time. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so I think, um, one very obvious one is uh, the kind of recovery from the pandemic. We're, um, I guess, technically not in the pandemic anymore, but obviously we still have people getting COVID. There, it's, it's, it hasn't gone away, but we are trying to kind of move to the next phase. And with that comes a lot of mental health challenges for our children. And so that um, challenge of trying to figure out how to support, especially our high schoolers and junior high, our our Hopkins kids on um, socio-emotionally, which is something that actually uh, our school leadership has focused more on over the last year and increased our expertise and attention to. Um, that's gonna be a really big challenge. We see this in, in studies across the country that kids are really suffering right now from the isolation they experienced over the last few years. Um, we also have to um, be thinking about enrollment, as I mentioned. So we have concerns about enrollment in our town. That's They're not going away. To some extent, they're getting worse. And we really have to think about how can we bring people to our town? And in some ways, they want to come. Um, it's just that they there's issues uh, with housing, with economics. You know, So there's a lot of opportunities, I think, for a school committee to be thinking, talking to planning board, talking to select board, and um, thinking about kind of um, cross-fertilizing about some of these concerns in town. Um, but there's also wonderful things going on. We have early college high school. We have Spanish language program for elementary school. The school was able to give back $400,000 to the town last year. Uh, so the finances are looking good. So there's just wonderful things happening as we need to think about uh, potentially being there at the table to help with some of these decisions. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the question of what are the most pressing issues faced by Hadley schools? And next is Christine Pichinski. I agree with Tony uh, in terms of the gap in our learning due to COVID. So I think recovering and to make sure that our kids are up to speed, that they are not suffering obviously emotionally or socially from the effects of COVID. Um, and of course we don't know where that stands as we go into next fall, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm very hopeful that, um, as I said before, I, I love our teachers. Obviously I was one of them <laughs> for quite a long time and I, my friends are wonderful. And I truly do trust them with my kids. Um, or, or I did because all my kids, really enjoyed their time. I think that one of the most pressing issues is obviously the concept of regionalization again. It's one that we visited before. It's one that I do not think will benefit our children. Um, and I think we need to we need to start promoting ourselves. We need to start promoting what we have and not concentrate as much on what we don't. We, our kids do not fall through the cracks. And we're very proud of our community and our school system. There's this sense of ownership we have. There's this pride we have. You know, I realize that sports are not the end all be all and that people think that, that we focus on them. But the fact is, it's not about the sports. It's about the community. We still, we have people who go to every event even when we had a zero 20 season. Um, and, and it's incredible to see that uh, love of community. And to, I think that a lot of kids can benefit from that. We just need, we just need to get ourselves out, you know, put ourselves out there. 
Um, we have school of choice. And believe me, I, I, people have a right to choose what's best for their children. I get that. Um, I would never say otherwise because I'm very proud of our Vogue students. But I think we have a lot to offer. I think we have a lot we can uh, do to increase enrollment. And, you know, with things hopefully moving forward, I think that there's a good possibility we can address these issues. Thank you. Uh, one last question. How do you think the role of the committee has changed as a result of COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic? First to answer is Christine Paczynski. I don't know if the role has changed. I think it's become uh, more adversarial. I don't believe that to be as much the case in Hadley, but overall, I think that um, there was, no one knew what was happening. It was an unprecedented time. And, and I think that it put a strain on the relationships that had been formed between teachers, parents, administration, and school boards. Um, and I think if we get back to looking at each other and actually, I, I think that, you know, the sense of Zoom did not quite help because it, it's harder to communicate, but when you're face to face, I think you have a greater sense of empathy. I think you work better together. I think that we can get back to a place where we are partners and there's teamwork as opposed to, uh, unfortunately, they had to make hard choices. And everybody is a you know Monday quarterback. I think they did the best that they could do with what they were presented with, and I respect them for it. I'm hoping that moving forward, God willing, we don't need to deal with that again. Um, so I have great faith in our school board because they're great people. Okay, um, how do you think the role of the committee has changed as a result of COVID, the COVID pandemic? Tony Lynn, you're up. All right, closing us out. Um, yeah, so I were, all of my friends and family that live in other places, when I told them I'm running for school committee to fill the open seat, they thought I was crazy. <laughs> um, I feel like, I feel really proud that we live in a town where it's not a crazy thing to run for school committee right now, where it's something that Christine and I feel like we would enjoy doing. <laughs> um, and that's because um, we have such a respectful school committee and respectful families and teachers and a union, and they've all worked really well together in the last couple of years. Um, and I'll just say like, in terms of COVID, much of the concerns that were shared by the public um, over the last school, uh, several years of school committee meetings were about COVID, of course. Sometimes people were against, sometimes often they were for. Um, I, like many people, have been highly concerned with COVID over the last two years. Uh, like many people, I lost a number of family members during the pandemic. My dad ended up in the ICU on a ventilator due to complications from COVID. In my view, the school committee managed to balance the concerns about safety with the needs to get kids back to their peers and teachers remarkably, and to the envy of many towns around us. And they continuously look to the recommendations from the Hadley Board of Health as it should be and look to data. Now that we're moving out of that acute phase of the pandemic, I think we need to look at these after effects. And I think that what's happened, how the role has changed is that I think the school committee has like learned even better how to work together, learned so much more about each other. And also I think that they've built trust in a lot of ways in the parents and teachers around town with how much time they put in and how much they care about. 
And now I think the role is going to be thinking much more about mental health issues, about special ed, about the differences between the kids that uh, had an advantage in this time and the kids that were lost or had gaps. And so thinking about the, that diversity among our kids, our students, and how can we move them forward now to both make up for what happened in the past and also look to these future opportunities we have. And, and to re-engage with the community and um, to keep them engaged as they were over the last few years and to look forward to new opportunities into the future. Well, thank you both very much. We are done with the questions and um, good luck on uh, May 17th. Okay, so um, I'm just going to do a quick couple of lines of advertising for how they melt the club because we're, you know, we any opportunity we have to toot our own horns, we do. So um, just wanted to thank everyone who came out uh, last month for our 17th annual, not annual, 17th <laughs> recycling day uh, last month. Uh, we saw a lot of folks in town and we got recycled a lot of items. So we we're very happy with the turnout. And um, we'll also be participating this week um, on Thursday the 12th at the open house at Hopkins Academy. We hope to introduce some parents to our club that maybe don't know us and we'll do some fun activities with them and get them involved. And um, so that's what we have coming up for that. Um, and uh, we have now um, the candidates for library trustee. Um, they will have their five minute introduction. So the first person up will be Lynn Latham. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lynn Latham. Though positions on the Library Board of Trustees are uncontested, I wanted to use this opportunity to introduce myself. I'm a relative newcomer, having lived in town a mere seven years, but I am also a lifelong library user and I have other relevant experience. Most recently, I served on the library's building committee. In the past, I was an administrator in an academic library. I served for six years as a trustee in another town and where I was chair for two of those years. And I also served on two Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners review committees for new buildings. Had Linderpool, new and spacious library, the result of support by the town and hard work by the board, staff, and friends of the Hadley Library. Regrettably, the pandemic undermined their efforts to celebrate the accomplishment. Even without an official grand opening, the town's residents have discovered this wonderful resource. Circulation and visitor counts are well above any recent year at the Goodwin Building. News of the building's meeting room has spread and it is being used regularly and for a wide variety of public and private programs. The Library of Budget approved just last week acknowledges this in part with the addition of several hours of staffing. The library already has and uses a bounty of volunteers and it has a waiting list of others who want to help. The trustees basically have it pretty easy at this point. They need to keep things running. And there's really only one area on which I hope to focus, perhaps some more programs, programs and program development, and making sure the town's residents know all of the wonderful things going on in our new library space. Thank you for your attention. And I want to thank the Hadley Mothers Club for providing this wonderful and important community service forum. Good night. Thank you. Our next um, candidate for um, library trustee is Susan Horry. Good evening. I would like to thank the Hadley's Mother Club for hosting this year's event. I appreciate their many years of involvement with the citizens of Hadley. My name is Susan Mooring, and I am running for the position of library trustee of the Hadley Library. I am married to Guilford Mooring and we have three girls. 
We moved into Hadley in March of 2001. In 2005, I began working at Hadley Elementary School until 2010. As a current public school teacher, I believe in the value of and support a public school education. As a resident of Hadley, I also value and support our public library. A public library supports the literacy of everyone, provides meeting spaces, as well as provides free access to knowledge, learning, and ideas. Public libraries also provide economic, social, and cultural opportunities. I look forward to serving on the board of the Library of Trustees. Thank you for considering me for this position, and I encourage everyone to vote on May 17. Thank you both very much. We appreciate you coming and speaking. And yes, everyone vote May 17th, please. Um, just one other plug for Hadley Mother's Club. Hadley Mother's Club has been sponsoring uh, quarterly uh, in conjunction with the Senior Center, their brown bag program. We have um, created our own brown bag that we fill with items that are usually a themed item and, um, but items that are needed uh, for the senior citizens. And we've, our group has really enjoyed um, providing these bags to the senior center, but it's uh, something, an uh, outreach program that we're very proud of. And we hope that all of the um, uh, folks that get them uh, appreciate the items and, and they're useful. All right, so the next, um, Speaker will be for Housing Authority, and that is Mr. John Allen. Uh, thank you, Denise. Uh, I'm John Allen. I'm running for a vacant seat on the Hadley Housing Authority. I feel a sense of civic duty to help out by volunteering in situations like this, in other words, where there's a vacancy. I am familiar with the delicate balance between the tenants, about 80 of them in 52 units, the contractor that had the hires to run the day-to-day uh, -day operations and the elected housing authority itself, which oversees the facility for the town. When I served as a selectman many years ago, I learned how important it is that a balanced relationship exists between the parties. If elected, I will do my best to maintain the nice relationships that exist now. I would appreciate your vote next week. And in closing, my thanks go out to the Hadley Mothers Club for maintaining this um, candidate's nice tradition. Thank you, Denise. All right, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so we have um, a videotape um, statement from, uh, from for the park commissioner, which is Diane Harris. Chokas and our uh, our man, John, will uh, run that through Hadley Media. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and fellow Hadley citizens. I'd like to start off by thanking the amazing Hadley Mothers Club for their invitation to present via Hadley Media tonight. This is truly a wonderful event and I'm so happy to have this opportunity. I would also like to thank Drew and John of Hadley Media for their efforts to help make tonight successful. You are truly appreciated. My name is Diane Karis Chokis and I'm up for re-election for the Park and Rec Commission. And although I'm running unopposed, I would like to take this opportunity John, are you to aware briefly that talk volume, about the Park and Rec not Department and program her. offerings. First, I would like to thank the other commissioners, Jim Shea and Steve Higgins. And our new amazing program director, Greg Lesage, for all of their continued efforts in the department's mission to bring quality programming to the citizens of Hadley and beyond. It's a great group to work with. And although we are a valuable contribution to the total development of Hadley, the Park and Rec Department has a small budget and is a small department. With that said, I would also like to take a moment to say thank you from the entire department to all of our volunteer assistants, coaches, program leaders, local Girl Scouts, 
National Honor Society students and helpers in general, just today, throughout the years, and in the past, for your role in helping to make the Park and Rec Department a truly inclusive town townwide service organization. The American Legion, Chief Mike Spanknable of the Hadley Fire Department and Chief Mike Mason of the Hadley Police Department are huge advocates and supporters of our department and that is so appreciated. Our departments work very well together to bring fun and joy to our town. I would also like to send a big thank you to all the local businesses who have donated items for our giveaways and raffles. Hundreds and hundreds of Hadley kids and adults have participated in park and rec programs and activities throughout the years, and we appreciate your continued backing. As a matter of fact, one of my first jobs in high school was being a camp counselor for the park and rec department summer camp. And for those that, of you that are interested, help and volunteers are still needed for our ongoing programs, support of those organizations and our initiatives. Both the Friends of Park and Rec and the Friends of Zaturka Park are very important to our department and are in need of volunteers. These days, it seems like volunteers can be a little hard to come by. Both of these organizations are great ways to contribute to the community with minimal time commitment. Contact the Park and Rec Department for more information. We continue to provide a number of our traditional programs, including year-round youth athletics, with an emphasis on participation and development. And we also offer a number of non-sports activities, several hands-on learning and educational programs, after-school programs, and school vacation week programs, as well as summer programs. The, the department also offers adult programs and events, and we're always developing new programs like Adult Pickleball, which was a huge success. Please check out the town website, Facebook, or Instagram for an updated program list or calendar. I've been a park and rec commissioner since April, 2013. During this time, we've seen lots and lots of changes and challenges. Our department has endured many, many changes through the years from literally being physically located from the North Hadley Hall to navigating offering activities throughout the pandemic. The park and rec office is now located in the town hall. Throughout these changes, we have persevered and we have found ways to reduce our budget and create income to help keep programs affordable to the families of Hadley. We always look to our constituency, all Hadley citizens who have participated in our programs or who have had a child or grandchild or relative or friend use Park and Rec to please contact our elected officials to express your support of our program, especially in the current climate of town budgets. The Park and Rec Department provides great programs and services to the town at a very minimal cost. And again, we're always open to new suggestions for both new or improvements to our current programs. You can email, call or stop by the office to see Greg to discuss your suggestions. Currently, we're very excited with the participation in our T-ball program. Lots of fun going on there. And very soon, signups are going on for our summer programs. Again, please check out our webpage under the town's website, Facebook, or Instagram. In closing, I respect the power of volunteer organizations. Our Park and Rec Department is what we, as a community, put into it, and I'm committed to supporting Park and Rec. Although I own and operate Escapes for Everyone, a travel business in town, and I'm also an active member of the Hadley Mothers Club, the Hadley Park and Rec Department has always been a top priority of mine. I'm thrilled to be part of such a great department that does so much for our Hadley citizens. I thank you very much for your time and consideration and ask for your support for the department and for my re-election as a Park and Rec Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, John, for your assistance on that. So I would like to thank um, Hadley Mothers Club member, Barb Pliska, for being our behind the scenes person for Zoom. And especially like to thank Town of Hadley employees, Jennifer and John of Hadley Media. Thank you. Don't forget to go vote on May 17th at the Hadley Senior Center from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you.